Hi, I'm Gilbert Strang. I teach at MIT, a wonderful job, and I get to teach you today uh, about quadratics. So let me say, what is a quadratic? There's a a x squared. It's that squared that makes it a quadratic, and a b times an x, and a c, a constant. So that would be our, can I say, our function. If you give me an x, these a and b and c are numbers, and you'll see I'll change those numbers to get different quadratics. But there, this is the whole family of quadratics, and if you give me an x, then, and I know A and B and C, then I can figure out why. It's, it's that squaring that makes the word quadratic come into this. Okay, so a good start is connect the algebra, these letters, to the graph, the picture, the geometry. So I've drawn three quadratics up there, three particular ones. Let me tell you what the A and the B and the C are. You see that those quadratics are just the, almost the same shape, just lifted up. So this f first guy is going to be y, y is, I think I picked x squared minus 2x there for this one. Now this one is up a little higher. The C is what moves it up and down. That's the easy part. Uh, it doesn't change the shape, just shift it up. So I think that second guy is going to be x squared minus 2x, same thing, but plus a 1. So I've lifted it up by 1 to get the second one, and then the next one is lifted up by another 1. So the, the top guy is y is x squared minus 2x plus 2. Okay, so those are three particular quadratics. And what do I ask you about them? Let me start by asking, when is y 0? I'm looking for the x's that produce a 0 here. And I won't work right away with this general a and b and c. I'll work with these numbers, where a was 1, b was minus 2, and c changed from 0 to up to 1 and up to 2. So I'm looking to see, well, let me take the bottom one, the first one. So if I look, what points am I looking for? I'm looking for the, there's one point, and there's another point that I'm planning to figure out. That's, you could say, solve the quadratic. Find where it's zero. So I would like to find where this guy, that's the bottom one, is zero. Not too hard, but we will do it in a good way. So I want to find where that's zero. And maybe you know that one way to do it, if you have a nice example like that one, is factoring. If I can split this into multiply two things together, and I can. Do you know how I could factor that? An x appears both places, so I'll, I can like take out the x, and what's the remaining thing? That x squared, of course, means x times x, so I need an x times an x there, and here I have minus 2 times the x. That's what I would call factoring that polynomial polynomial, quadratic, because it's, it's, uh, it's got that square in it. Okay, and this tells me, what I could probably figure out anyway, that it tells me where the zeros are. When is this zero? Well, this could be zero. That's this point. x equals zero. That's that point. Or x could be two, and then this would go away. And, and if x was 2, I'd have 4 minus 4. I'd certainly get 0. And that's this point. So the two roots are, shall I introduce those words, roots? I don't know why we use the word roots. A lot of math words, you know. Who knows why? The roots are 0 and 2. Good. I have solved that first quadratic. Okay, ready for the second guy. 
this one. What do we see in the picture for that one? That's the middle one. And you see it's rather special. It's, it, only, it, it touches the, the y equals 0. It hits y equals 0. It has a root at just one place. This had a root twice. This one has a root just once. And uh, I can find out where that is. Well, shall I try the same thing of factoring? So I factor this guy. So I see x squared minus 2x plus 1. Maybe that, that might jump to mind as it's, it's something times itself. That's a very special one to factor. That's x minus 1 times x minus 1. What I would call a double root. The, that is 0 at x equal 1. So, so what am I saying about this guy? Double root. 1 and 1. Double roots get mathematicians excited. Well, mathematicians are easily excited, you could say. And that's uh, special. OK. So it's x minus 1 squared. And we see a, a double root. Now let me go on to the top guy. Where, where is that 0? Can we factor that? We have a problem, this, this, this one, because we can see from the picture that this thing never hits zero. So am I going to say no roots for the third guy? No roots? I don't like to say that. Gauss, who was the greatest mathematician of all time, said that if we have a quadratic, it should have two roots. If we had uh, x to the 27th starting our y, there should be 27 roots. But where are they? OK. And if I, uh, you might say, well, just factor and find them. Well, of course, I, I can see from the picture I'm not going to find them. If I try to factor this in this way or this way, I don't succeed. Something, what's up here? What's up with, the, with the, uh, this case where the quadratic is, is up there? So uh, let me pause here and give you a chance to think what to do. do see, the, see what the problem is. Maybe think of another example. Let me, let me suggest some other examples, some different A, B, and C. Suppose I take A to B minus 1. Ha ha, that will change the picture completely. With that minus sign, my quadratic is going to go downwards. It'll be like throwing a ball in the air and having it come down. It's, it's going to go that way. And let me take, a, say, 4x here. And uh, I don't know what to take as c. Uh, let me take uh, uh, 9. Oh, uh, that seems a pretty big number. I don't know if that has any roots. I don't know if you could graph it, but you could sure try. So have a try, and then I'll see you in a minute. OK, uh, hi again. I'm back and still looking for those missing roots. You remember we had this example of x squared minus 2x plus 2. So that was a particular choice of a was 1, b was minus 2, c was plus